boy. There ain't much that he be asking for. He Welcome in, everybody. It's the coach, and you're tuned in to Madden 19 on EA Sports. Straight ahead, Blake Bortles in the reigning AFC South champion Jacksonville Jaguars. They match up with Tom Brady in the New England Patriots. With that, let's head on up to Foxborough. Standing by with the call at Gillette Stadium, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League brings us to Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Mass. A moment ago, the pride of Massachusetts as they get set to go head-to-head -head with the Jacksonville Jaguars. I'm Brandon going along with Charles Davis. Charles, good matchup here. A couple of playoff teams from a season ago. And just think about how the NFL works, partner. Eight teams that made the playoffs the year before didn't make it last season. So there's always going to be parity in this league, and guys have to be ready to go. Just because you made it the year before doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get back again. Ready to go now. Steven Gaskowski for the Patriots as we are off and running in Foxborough. Gets fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So here's the first drive now for the Jags. Leading the charge is the UCF product, who hails from right there in the Orlando area in Altamont Springs, Blake Bortles. And you can see why he was the number three pick when he came out in the NFL draft. 6'5", sturdy guy, strong arm, led his UCF team to a big bowl victory over Baylor and runs the ball way better than he's ever given credit for. On first down, Bortles. Incomplete, over the middle, Safarian Jenkins. And he'll get to the 29-yard line, brought down there. That throw good for four. It's second down. And for this offensive unit that we'll see here in just a second, T.J. Yeldon is certainly someone to mention. Came out of Alabama with a lot of attention, but earned it. This guy is better and better at a lighter weight. Shifty back who can finish with power. Second and six, just inside the 30. Bortles to throw on second down. Out of the backfield, it's T.J. Yeldon. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. It's a gain of six on the play, and that'll make it third and one. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. And the Jaguars send out their punter. Back deep is Philip Dorsett. This is taken at the 15. That'll be a 49-yard punt. Six yards there on the return. And the Patriots take over. So here come the Patriots now to take over on offense. They're led out by a man who started more Super Bowls than anyone in NFL history, the great Tom Brady. I can't help but admire the career Tom Brady has had. The numbers are off the charts. The Super Bowl championships and rings, we know that they are incredible. But how about the durability? Had one season that he missed, most of that season because of a knee injury. The rest of the time, he answers the bell and wills his team to victory more times than not. And we keep hearing from people who are waiting to see the drop-off in his play. I'd quit worrying about it. I'd quit looking for it. He says he wants to play until he's 45. Is there any reason to doubt him? His skills have shown no sign of declining. They'll run it here. This is James White. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Calais Campbell on the stop. 
As the offensive striders pop up on your screen, Charles, let me ask you, Chris Hogan, what does he bring to this offense? A guy that you look at and really don't circle in your game plan, if there's other guys that you look at, then you realize this guy can do damage. Finds his way open on almost every snap. A first carry now for Rex Burkhead. And a short gain there as he'll get it up only to about the 24. It'll be a pickup of just two, and it'll be third down. Partner, your thoughts on this D-line? I love a unit that can control the run and get after the passer. This is an all-around terrific defensive front. Hard to move the ball against them on the ground, and then when you want to throw it, look out. Here they come after the quarterback. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. From the gun, it's Brady. And he'll have his man, that's Edelman. And he gets it to the 32, good enough for a first down. Brady to his old reliable Edelman, and the Patriots have a first down. Nice catch right there, brings to mind the sentence. When in doubt, find your veterans. We used to laugh back in the day when they would call guys like them crafty veterans. You, you get up in your 30s, you're still playing receiver, but you're around that long at that position, you're doing something right. Just remember this, when he was young, he thought the crafty veteran go, was simply a guy who couldn't run anymore. Now he understands a little bit better. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Like 20. Throwing on first down is Brady. And that is incomplete here. Julian Edelman, the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground, incomplete. Here's second and 10 now from about the 32. Brady will try again on second down. Allen has it, left side. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. And partner, I think that was a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Last catch did get three, but they're still left needing seven yards on third down. Brady to throw again. He targets Jordan Matthews, and it's caught. And a 42-yard line here and brought down there. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. What we hear so often, how tackling has become almost a lost start in the NFL game. But it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. You got to go up and make the tackle right away. On fourth down on now is the lefty Ryan Allen to punt. Back deep, Jadon Mickens. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. And before Jacksonville gets the ball back here, uh, let's look back to that week six game against Dallas. Uh, the defense, I mean, look, the offense struggled, but the defense really struggled. Those first four weeks, they were as advertised. 56 points allowed total. 70 points, though, now given up the last two weeks, Charles. Yeah, hard to believe that win against New England that seemed like a real establisher. You know, saying this team's going to be there all year long, and we're going back to at least the AFC Championship game. That's way in the rear view right now. They've been outscored 70 to 21 the last two weeks. And the defense has to take its share of blame. But at the same time, the offense not helping at all. They're minus nine in turnover margin for the year. Blake Bortles has thrown eight interceptions thus far against nine touchdown passes. That ratio has to improve and get better. I won't leave it all on him, but the offense can't keep putting the defense in tough situations. 
A quick look here at the Patriot defense. I'm taking a good look at linebacker Dante Hightower, who missed most of 2017 due to injury. And I do believe that the Patriots missed him in a big way in the Super Bowl because you remember against Atlanta in the previous Super Bowl, it was a strip sack by Dante Hightower that changed the complexion of the game. Big and strong in the middle, stout against the run, can rush the passer from a defensive end position, and he's just that alpha guy that everyone gravitates towards on the defensive side of the ball. On second down, here's Fournette, and he'll get only a couple up to the 22. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. What that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Throwing his Bortles on third down. Safarian Jenkins has it. And he's going to get to the 31, enough for the first down. Bortles to the former Jet, Safarian Jenkins for the Jags' first down. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. They go play action here on first down. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. Line of scrimmage, the 31, as they line up second and 10. Bortles will try again on second down. And his throw here is incomplete. The intended target, the tight end, Austin Safarian Jenkins. And it'll bring up third down. But not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. Now Bortles again. And he's got Moncrief. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. First time they've hooked up here. Good for 17 and a first down. Partner, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook. Tough to defend because you think it's a go route, and then he breaks it back on the comeback. There's one other thing you need as well. A well-thrown ball. Exactly right. Have a guy who has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first. Fournette, a first down carry. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. But the converse is, though, You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks. And when you don't, that's the result you end up with. Let's go, let's go. On the ground, this is T.J. Yeldon. And no room that time, getting it to about the 46. Just a yard there, so it brings up a tough third and 12. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. The Jaguars on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This is third down and 12. 380, A fake to Fournette, now it's Bortles to throw. Try to lay one up deep. And that is caught. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Dante Moncrief, 54 yards, and the Jags have taken the early lead. And it was a tight window. He knew he had to rocket that thing in there. He got it done.
And when you're able to complete one like that, your confidence has to just go sky high. You just mentioned it. Tight window, zings it in there despite excellent coverage. Result, touchdown. Josh Lambeau now for the point after. Extra point tacked on by Lambeau, and it's now a 7-0 game. So that drive, 80 yards, 9 plays. And it culminates in a Jags touchdown. Here's Lambeau out to kick this one away. On the return, here's the dangerous Cordero Patterson. They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. Patriots now first and 10 at their own 24. Wait 20! Wait 20! Go, go. They begin the drive on the ground. It's White. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. At the end of one, 7-0 is our score. And we'll return to Foxborough after this. Right there. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Alongside Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon, it's the Patriots in possession to begin quarter number two. They've got it second and four to start things out. This one to Burkhead, and he'll slip his way up across the 30 to the 32. Barry Church, the strong safety, the one to get him down. Some of these play calls, I think they're a little conservative, but you know me, because it's easy to sit up in this booth, right, and make all the calls and, and think I'm going to be correct. But I would like to see them open things up, because otherwise this defense is going to gang up on the run and set them down. They'll run. This is Burkhead. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. That'll be a New England first down, a gain of 12. We don't talk about it very often, but sometimes there's a dip in intensity when you start the second half, which can manifest itself in some sloppy tackling. And how about right there? He ran right through that weak tackle attempt. two combination look pretty good how about that let's see if they let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch though so after two first downs they get another here first and 10 at the 45 
Brady now on first down. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he's taken down inside the 30. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. down Brady and incomplete crisis averted almost picked let's face it perfection is something we all chase whether it's playing this game or whatever we do hard to attain but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete here's second and ten now from the 29 Now Brady leaves to Burkhead on the draw. And he's going to bring this one down to right about the 20-yard line. Nine yards on the pickup there as he'll be left with third and one. I thought that was a good call. Passing situation on second down. They hit him with the draw instead and pick up nice yardage. Yeah, because the draw, they're thinking pass when they see that initially defensively, right? But you know in today's NFL, most of the time on second and long when it's a passing situation, pass rushers are out in the field and they're only thinking one thing. Get to the quarterback. And oftentimes you can bypass them with a running play. Wait, 20! Wait, 20! On the run, it's Burkhead. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 16. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? That looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. It just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you should have a few men in the box there. Back at the 17. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Early down stuffs to put this offense in a precarious position. We know the securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive here, second and 11. 20, 380. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. Five yards on the pickup, and they're going to have a third down. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. New England on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This is third and seven. Working from the gun, it's Brady. Pressure from his right, and he goes down hard, flat on his back. Yannick Ngakwe in there to drop him for a four-yard loss, and it'll be fourth down. Remember this Jacksonville D, 55 sacks a season ago. I think they want to fight for nickname supremacy with Pittsburgh. Remember, they were just one behind Pittsburgh for the overall lead in sacks last year. Pittsburgh known as Blitzburg. Jacksonville, they're known as Saxonville. So now on fourth down, on comes Steven Goskowski to try and get the patch three. This will be a 34-yard attempt. And Goskowski's kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. A dozen plays on that drive that ends with the field goal. Let's go ahead and break out some of the old chestnuts here, right, partner? 
keep the ball in front, rally to it, and make the tackle. Right? No big plays given up. No balls over your head. Bend, don't break. Hold on, hold on. Chestnuts? Ah, you like Come that? On. One? What does that mean, break out? Just because you're you break chestnuts? I I'm not sure about that, but I'm just going with why they said that. I have no idea. Koskowski now converted for three. Now he'll kick this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. A look at Dante Moncrief. He and the offense getting ready to go again here. He's doing what he's capable of, having a solid game. Not, not the most amazing game. He's not over 100 yards, but a good game so far. And you just know that mentally, he feels like he's one catch away from turning it into a great game and starting on that road. And the defenders are well aware of that, too. They've got to figure out a way to not let that escalate. Keep him right in this zone here and call it a day because otherwise he can really decimate them. Better believe they are well aware of his playmaking ability. 380. 380. They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. Portals now to throw. And to the tight end here, Safarian Jenkins. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. That catch good for five. It's third down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Here's Bohan in the fullback, and he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. Two minutes remain here in the first half. Back to Foxborough after this. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll pay a visit to Jonathan Coachman. He's in Orlando, and he'll have our EA Sports halftime report. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Throwing on first down is Bortles. He goes underneath for Yeldon. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. He'll get a couple yards on that one, and it'll bring up a second down. Boy, the evolution of the game and how these guys on plays like that can get out of the pocket, keep plays alive. It just makes things so much harder for defenses. It really does. And we're talking about an era in the game where the quarterbacks are the most athletically gifted that we've seen in a bunch. I mean, we talk about collectively, it's unbelievable. So their ability to move is practiced now. It's not necessarily, oh, he just took off and you guys figure it out. When he takes off, everyone knows where to go now. They know how to run routes, change things, make themselves presentable for the quarterback. It's a lot of time that they put in on it. It's not just your static one, two, three. This is where the ball goes anymore. The second down attempt there, knocked down as it leaves the quarterback's hand, and it's incomplete. Anytime a ball's thrown in the middle of the field, it's popped up in the air. I expect someone to catch. It doesn't matter whether it's offense or defense because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field. In this case, no one came up with it. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves them staring up here at a third and eight. From the gun, it's Bortles. 
to the sideline. And wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it. But he is able to keep the feet in bounds. Call it a gain of three. And that's going to make it fourth down. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. Ike's been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd went to ballet school. Got the toes down and stayed in bounds. And the Jaguars send out their punter as he'll kick it away for the second time. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. The New England Patriots coming off a heck of a win on Sunday night over Kansas City, 43-40. to There is one interesting nugget, though, that's not good for New England. They've given up 40 points only three times since 2013. All three have been against Kansas City. How about that? They hope they don't see them again in the playoffs down the road, right? Because, I kind of hope they do, though, well, selfishly. We, we, we do as fans, that's for sure. But let's give Tom Brady some praise, right? Of course, we do that all the time, but deservedly so here. 200th win of his NFL career. That extends his all-time record. But counterintuitively, 20. New England have been 0-6 under Tom Brady in games where opponents had scored 40 or more points. You would think in a shootout, you'd love to have Tom Brady, but that hasn't been the case. But he delivered on Sunday night. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. Now before the second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. Now Brady throwing on second down. And right side caught Hogan. A very solid gain of 27. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. On first and 10, here's Brady. On the slam, he gets it to Gronkowski. And before the second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. So second in inches after that first down completion went just shy of the marker. By 20, by 20, no! Shotgun now for Brady. Wide open, Julian Edelman. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. The Patriot passing game is rolling. They've got another first down. The former seventh-round pick, Julian Edelman, just continues to have such a productive career. And has made himself into a receiver. Remember, he was a college quarterback, and not just a productive one, a very good one. At Kent State, right? Yes, a great leader, a guy who could make plays with his feet and his arm. Got to the NFL and had to convert him to being a receiver and was drafted that way. And that conversion, <laughs> oh boy, it's been good. By 20! By 20! Into the red zone, it's Brady. Quickly to Gronkowski, that's caught. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. 
Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Now the Patriots moving quickly, hustling up to the line. Now Brady again. Goes underneath here to White. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. And they'll burn the timeout with five seconds left. A chance to try to add three points before heading to the locker room. So the offensive unit called the T.O. And now we are ready to resume play. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. From the left hash, a chip shot here. And Goskowski's kick is good. And they'll get it back within a point at 7-6. to six. So the three points here, they're still down, but they put somewhat of a dent into that lead going into the break. Anything helps when you're trying to chip away at a lead, but they do know that they're going to need a little bit better effort in the second half. Goskowski now converted for three. Now he'll kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half. He'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. play of the first half, barring a penalty as they come up on first and ten. And with time running down, they go down to a knee. So we've reached halftime here with the visiting Jaguars out on top. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports halftime report. Coach, Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to an abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. We want to remind you that new this year in regular season games, I'll take you around the NFL and give you stats and scores from games in progress, as well as look back at games that have already been completed. So keep an eye out for that. But for now, let's get you back out to Brandon and Charles. All right, Coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. Now it's Patterson. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Now the Patriots offense, they work their way back out onto the field. They're down here, but very much in this game. What's the tonality of a coach's talk? when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission. Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. 
sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. The drive starts with a run by White. And they're able to get this one across the 35. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. There's a carry now for Mike Gillisley. And very little room to maneuver. He'll get this down to about the 39. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. By 20! 20! The play fake for Burkhead, now Brady. He's going to look deep for Edelman. Incomplete, almost intercepted. They haven't picked him off yet. Would have been a great time for the first, but instead it's third down. They have not gotten him going at all. Tried to spark something there with a longer throw, unable to complete it. But you have to keep trying. He's one of their best playmakers. No matter what it says on the scoreboard, you're always trying to get him the football. New England on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and eight. Wait, 20, 380. Go! Play action. Now it's Brady. They will find his man. That's Hogan complete. 17 yards there for the Patriots as they've got themselves a first down. I'm guessing, partner, that if we're in the huddle with the Patriots right now, there's not a single guy that thinks they have any chance of coming back in this one, especially not with Tom Brady. Though. Yeah, who's Tom Brady? What's he done in the past as far as comebacks are concerned? They're down right now, but that can evaporate quickly with him in the huddle. Brady, 12 of 15, throwing the ball. 80% so far, and it's first and 10. 20! Now Burkhead. And he takes it down to the 40 with a pickup of four. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down. A very solid gain on that play. Second down, here's Brady. Allen's got it over the middle. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. The Patriot passing game is rolling. They've got another first down. But when you hit him on the move like that, he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam. Oh, boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. Can't find much space. Drop just inside the 20. A gain of three, second down. Oftentimes we play as an offense for their variety of being able to hit people with the run in the pass. But in this game, how about what we're seeing from the safeties? They are all over the field. Doesn't matter if they threw it or if they're trying to run it. I don't think we've ever awarded an MVU most valuable unit, but you're right. It might go to them in this game. I like that. MVU. Well done. They'll run it now out of the gun. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Dante Fowler in on the stop. 
I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. Brady going to try and throw on third down. This is caught. Gronkowski. And he's going to get into the end zone. So cue up the Gronk spike. It's a Patriot touchdown. Rob Gronkowski, a 14-yard touchdown. And the Pats able to cash in for six. Well, they had their chances in the first half, you remember, but had to settle for two field goals. This time, they come away with six. I think they actually got affirmation about what they were doing by getting a touchdown because the field goals means they got in range but couldn't quite finish it off. This time, they broke through, and that's great for the old confidence. And on the sideline, difference of a feeling between three and six, is it astronomical or it, no? It, it, it can be at times, that's for sure. A lot of times, the field goal feels like a disappointment. The touchdown, well, that tells you you're getting it done. From the gun, it's Brady. Under pressure, down he goes. Sacked at the 10. So tried to throw it in for two points, but the D got home, brought him down. Yeah, got home, which means there had to be good coverage. Just had nowhere to go with the ball. Typically, you're trying to throw quick hitters, quick slants, you know, maybe even a quick fade. Nothing was open. He ends up getting sacked. Koskowski now out to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Here comes the Jags offense now. Time for their first possession of half number two. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance to turn that into points on the offensive end. Can you imagine what the grease board looks like at the half? Because no, tell me. that's exactly what they printed up. Stop them on defense, get the ball back for our offense, and go downfield and score some points. Now, the last part remains to be seen, but they got the first part done very well. Do people use grease boards, or you mean the magic marker boards? Yeah, those two. <laughs> <laughs> they begin with a run by Fournette. <laughs> That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. And yet again, this run game just continues to be completely shut off. Completely stymied. I mean, they're trying to get some consistency, trying to find places to roam. They just haven't been there throughout this game. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. On second down, here's Bortles. Incomplete, almost intercepted. They haven't picked him off yet. Would have been a great time for the first, but instead it's third down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense if that fell harmlessly into the ground. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Now Bortles. This is Yeldon on the dump off. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Give him six on the play. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. you like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion. And what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. The Patriots send out their punter as he'll come on to kick this one away. A well-hit ball there. 50 yards on the punt, three on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Tom Brady leads the offense out for their next possession. He's been pretty solid, pretty consistent. Just the one touchdown pass, but I think he's managed the game well, no? I would agree with you, and that's what you're looking for out of your field leader. Making sure that you're playing well, 
and not making any big mistakes. Oftentimes, that's how you're judged. Mm -hmm. How big a mistake and when it occurs. No interception so far. They'll like that. I just want you to know that you agreeing with me, that's going to get me through this third and fourth quarter. Are you touched? <laughs> He's patting his heart, boys and girls. He's touched. Respect. And the window closes quickly. He'll only get up to the 22-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Wait, 20. Down 80. Down 80. Brady to throw on second down. And Gronkowski's got it complete over the middle. And he's able to get up here to the 26. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. New England on third down. They've been very good, five for seven thus far. This is third and four. Brady. And that is incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. Here's Ryan Allen now as he'll punt it away for the second time. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. This will be fielded at the 17. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And the Jaguars go on offense first down and 10. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Bortles leads the Jags up first and 10 at their own 21. Set. They'll start out on the ground. It's T.J. Yeldon. And he'll take it ahead to the 28-yard line. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven. Leaves him with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down. That fits the bill. Second down, here's Yeldon. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Seven yards there, good enough. Nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Portals on the give to Fournette. Oh, now he bowls him over. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 11 yards there for Jacksonville and a first down as well. And that's the big fella's M.O. right there. Running through tackles, keeping the sticks moving forward. In this defense, if you don't bring 11 guys to the ball to try and get him on the ground, he's going to keep making runs like that. I feel the press box shaking every time he touches the rock. Play fake here on first down. Caught Safarian Jenkins right side. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. Three quarters have come and gone. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Foxborough. 
It's Jaguar football, but a little work to do for them. They trail here as we start the fourth. So into Pat's territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 38. Green 80. Green 80. Green Working from the gun. It's Bortles. And he just gets rid of it. Throws it away. A wise move there. Looked like nobody open. Now second down. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. They work again from the 38 on second and 10. Green 80. Green 80. Bortles again here on second and 10. Wide open receiver complete. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Bortles to the former Colt Moncrief for a Jaguar first down. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback has to slide and find open space to throw. On first down, Bortles. Incomplete, over the middle, Safarian Jenkins. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. 12 more yards there and another first down. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Bortles now six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. Now Bortles again. And he's going to be taken down, sacked back around the 18-yard line. Adrian Claymore drop him for a loss of four the Patriot fans certainly happy to see Claiborne wearing their jersey this season obviously a good pickup by the AFC champs and you have to go back to when Claiborne came into the league a first round pick with Tampa Bay but just remember last season six sacks in one game against Dallas <laughs> you'll remember Adrian Claiborne's name from that point on who was blocking in that game no one so after the sack here second and 14 From the gun, it's Bortles. And to the tight end here, Safarian Jenkins. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Well, that was an okay hookup there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. on third down. They've hit four of seven. This is third and 11. Bortles going to run the draw with Fournette. So a good spin move, but not a whole lot to show after as he's taken down. Four yards on the pick up there, but it's going to take him to fourth down. No, that wasn't an explosive run. That wasn't one that took it all the way to the house. But, boy, for a team that's had trouble running it the entire game, that's the kind of run they need, hopefully, to get themselves kick-started. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. And Lambeau will put this one through, and the drive will wind up yielding three. So with that field goal, this one's now back within a field goal. Maybe not the ultimate result they wanted, but gets them that much closer. This game is unfolding 
like a really good book, isn't it? Because I feel like there's a few more plot twists yet to be revealed before this one is over. Now after the made field goal, back out Lambo to kick this one off. Now it's Patterson. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. And now out come the Patriots. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. So Brady and the Pats take over first and 10 at their own 24. They'll start the drive with a give to White. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be set here right now. short gain there as he'll get it up only to about the 24. Miles Jack there to make the tackle. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. This is White on the screen. And he's able to get up here to the 26. Only two on the screen pass there, and it'll be fourth down. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion, and you count on your D to make it stand up. Here's Ryan Allen now, as he's on to punt for New England. Oh, a nice spin. Yeah, that's a 48-yard punt with a coverage holding him to three on the return. And out will come the offense as they take over. The Jaguars' offense now heads back onto the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. He <laughs> put it through the post. That's going to help him in contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this yeah, time. I don't know if that would help him in contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> <Toe bash. laughs> I don't know about that. Bash, <laughs> Super tough. <laughs> on first and ten here's Bortles and it's incomplete took a shot couldn't connect I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback but when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it it helps to have the big gun in this case just a little bit too much once again they'll come up on the 26 yard line second and ten Back to the air on second down. It's Borders. And incomplete. There are a good number of coaches at any time they call an in route are really worried about the play because there's so much traffic ordinarily that the ball has to get through to get to the receiver. And on that play, it was batted down. The Jaguars on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and 10. Green 80, green 80. Shotgun now for Bortles. And he's taken down, trying to do a little 
little too much getting outside of the pocket, and it results in a sack. Dante Hightower able to get him down for a loss of 11 on the play, and it'll be fourth down. And the Jaguars send out their punter as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Here's Dorsett. A good return there, 17 yards. And possession will sweep. Operate within your four-minute offense here, Charles? Definitely. Remember, the four-minute offense doesn't always correspond to what's up on the clock. What they need to do is play a little bit of keep away right now run the clock down, make sure their opponent doesn't get the ball back. Their dream scenario, get enough first downs and make them yeet up their timeouts so the game ends when you're kneeling down with the football. Wait, 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 wait. And they'll run it here. And he's going to take this across midfield into Jacksonville territory. And they give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. And what do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage, use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. And right side caught, Hogan. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. That'll put him close to 100 yards receiving. He's at 98, and he's got a first down. This is something you got to be wary of defensively. I mean, just because they're in the mode of trying to burn some clock doesn't mean they won't pass it, and they got good yardage out of that one. Yeah, and really, when you're looking at it, now they've got a fresh set of downs. Look for second down. If they want to take another shot and try and loosen things up, that'd be the time to do it. Time for a break. We're back to see what happens after this. So the Patriots with a football as we get you reset. They've got a first and ten as they look to try and finish this one off. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Al Gillisley. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Another running situation on the doorstep as they come up second and ten. And on the ground they go with a running back. And he'll get this down to about the 30, 31 yard line. And now with 152 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action.
New England on third down. Five out of nine thus far. This is third and nine. Four down, four down. This is Gellisley. And he's going to get this one down to the 30. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. As they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. It'll come from the right hash. It's a 47-yard attempt. And Goskowski's kick is good. And that's going to up the lead to 15 to 10. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, it's a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because they feel a whole lot better about their position. Uh, and a touchdown in the other direction, all of a sudden, they're down. Goskowski now converted for three. Now he'll kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Getting set to go again, Blake Bortles marches back onto the field with his offense. This is something we've seen many times over the course of his career. Can he pull off another fourth-quarter comeback? And it's very strange, isn't it? Because when it's a player of this magnitude, even though the guys on defense have the lead and are sitting in the best spot, they're maybe the most nervous people in the stadium because they've seen this happen to too many people before, too many teams. They've got to find a way to shut him down. Here we go again for the grizzled vet. Back to throw. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A really good pickup of 28 yards. He's back to throw. And he'll toss this one incomplete. Seeing no options, he throws it away. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it, or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it. No one got it. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. They'll look to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. He'll look to throw. That one complete to Yeldon. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. They give him 27 yards on the third down conversion. Now whistles here, and I believe one of the Jaguar linemen might have moved. False start, offense. The crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, down. making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count. The false start backs him up five, first and 15. to throw 
And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. Bortles to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. So he's unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark, really, start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here, or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Now Bortles. Paul bringing it in. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. First down, Jacksonville. The passing game looking sharp on this drive for the Jags. Now whistles here. And I believe one of the Jaguar linemen might have moved. Well, Charles, they were close in the end, but they couldn't get that last play, that last little miracle play done. They were within striking distance, but couldn't find a way to score. They definitely had hope. They definitely had opportunity. Just unable to cash in at the end. Not an easy play by any stretch, but they definitely had a chance. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. The Patriots winners here at home as we say so long from Foxborough.